Welcome. We are at the door of this scientific adventure, but before you walk through the woods into the unknown, there's something I have to tell you. The woods are like a maze. If you don't want to get lost, you need to have clarity in at least three important things. First, you need to look yourself in the mirror. Recognize yourself as a human being and this whole adventure as a human endeavor. Second, you have to have a goal and a plan to get there. Sort of like a map where you can lay out your path, keep track of your decisions and keep oriented towards your goal. Third, you need someone to guide you. Somewhat with the experience of navigating in the woods so that you can follow their steps attend to their wisdom and learn from them. Let's review this carefully. As we saw in the previous video, ideally, science avoids emotional and cultural information to account for reality. However, science is not something that happens in the void, detached from human experience. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Science is done by humans. Any adventure implies someone who experiences and acts. A person. Multiple people trying to understand reality as a community, the scientific community, is a collection of perspectives and experiences. Although the ideal is a pure, unbiased, and objective description of facts, our very nature prevents us from achieving those ideals. We have a perspective of the world. We make assumptions based on our previous experiences. We have emotions, we have preferences, we make mistakes, we follow traditions, and we have blind spots. In that sense, the idea of a pure scientific mind is mostly a myth. Science is very human. But hey, 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 it's not hopeless. There are two things to consider here. First of all, practice. At the personal level, just like playing sports or playing an instrument, painting or cooking, practice helps us improve our individual scientific thinking abilities. And there's something important here, by the way. The best athletes, musicians, artists, or chefs have endured many failures. Some may even say that failure is a crucial source of information for improving and learning. So be okay with failure. Actually, embrace it. At the level of the scientific community, practice improves our intersubjective understanding of reality. A group of individuals that are self-aware, well-informed, and in constant practice make for a quasi-optimal community aiming to an ideal. Even though achieving the ultimate goal of knowing reality might be in the end, perhaps unlikely, every time we understand a little bit more, we move one step forward. And remember, the more we can understand reality, the better we can act. But back at you. Look in the mirror. You need to recognize all your potential, your imagination, your abilities to solve problems, and your unique form to see the world. But also, you need to be aware of your own biases shortcomings, fears, and your proclivity to make mistakes. When you go into the unknown, you will be confronted with yourself. You'll get distracted, you may doubt your abilities, and you may get lost. So, previous to any application of any strategy, you need to focus and trust yourself. We can summarize this in the following practical idea. The world is filled with distractions. The path to success in science and most endeavors for that matter, is to avoid distractions, have a goal in mind, and organize your strategy towards it. A strategy? How? Well, let's go get the map. The success of science in explaining reality is not only due to its ability to predict events and formulate solutions to current and future problems. The crucial difference is the strategy it adopted. First, you notice something from reality. Then, you wonder about what you noticed and come up with your own personal explanation. 
then you decide what tools and plans will allow you to corroborate if your expectation was correct. And then you tell the world about your results. That's the scientific method. That is your map. It's a low resolution map, so you have to specify the details. The specifics are left for each particular goal, but let's take a closer look at the map to obtain a clearer picture. You may think that what is meant by observation is not very clear. What does it mean to observe? You're observing all the time. Why is that a requirement for science? You may also have the idea that observation is some sort of technical step that scientists take, perhaps right after putting that lab coat on, looking at bottles or formulas, and looking through a microscope or something. Nope, that's not quite what it is. Instead, it has to do with two interesting characteristics in the interaction between the world and human cognition. Let me give you an example. Do you notice that I changed my outfit during the video? If you didn't, go back and see it yourself. I can wait. Okay, at some point of the video, I was wearing this. And later, I was wearing this. Some of you may have noticed, but some of you did not. So what? Christopher Chavris and Daniel Siemens, two cognitive scientists and Nobel Prize winners, develop an experiment known as the Invisible Gorilla. If you haven't seen it, you should go look it up. That experiment revealed that when people focus their attention on something in particular, the rest of the information becomes irrelevant and we don't perceive it. There are two central teachings you may want to extract from this experiment. First, the world is always changing. There's always something going on. We may be ignoring a lot, which means we know very little. So when we think, what should I observe? Everything is boring. It probably means that we're just not paying attention. So part of observation is letting those changes capture your attention. The second teaching is this. There are too many changes in the world and we cannot capture all of them at once. Besides, if you don't have a particular reason to pay attention, none of those changes will be ever noticed. So changes in reality don't matter if you don't focus your attention an active participant in capturing a changing event. So, observation means actively focusing on a phenomenon that captures your attention. You noticed something. Awesome. What was that? When do you notice it? How was it? Was it fast? How fast? What else don't we know? Has somebody else noticed something like this before? What have they said? Do you agree with them? Is there anything they are not seeing? Now you're asking questions, good questions. Some of those questions help you explore and some others help you refine your scope. But if you want to capture with precision the thing that you noticed, you have to narrow it to a single question. Is it this? It is a yes, no question. You should aim for these kind of questions for a very important reason. A positive answer to that question will be your hypothesis. And why is that important? Because as we said in the previous video, a scientific hypothesis must be falsifiable. In other words, this is the idea that you will propose and try to destroy and prove wrong. The best hypotheses are formulated as strong statements. It says, this is what I believe reality is and it also contains the conditions for your statement to be true. Before entering into the woods, you should mark in your map the place where you'll find the thing you notice. That is your hypothesis. I think I noticed this, and it is right here. From your point of departure, you should delineate the path to get there. Do you need specific tools to go through some areas of the woods? What about a device that captures information that you cannot obtain with your bare senses? Do you need some sort of ruler to mention sizes and some other dimensions? Those are the conditions you need to test if your hypothesis is true. That's your methodology. If you're exploring the world and you don't bring with you a well-calibrated and updated map, you may get easily lost. Another way to put it is this. If you get lost in the woods, looking back at your map will allow you to refocus on your goal 
reorient and calibrate your path. So before departure, make sure that your map is as adequate as possible. But what if there's something unexpected? You can control for everything, David. Good catch. There will be some unexpected events. How to deal with those will be the topic of our next video. For the moment, you have your map. Now let's get help. Every time you get into the woods is an opportunity for you to practice your scientific thinking abilities. As in any practice, it is a good idea to have someone who knows more than you to help you, to guide you, to teach you, a mentor. Ideally, this mentor will help you navigate and will give you ideas on how to improve your skills. Besides possibly having an actual teacher, you can find a sort of mentor in the writings of the greatest scientist. This has a lot of perks because you can have mentors that come from decades or even centuries ago. Their guidance comes in books and articles that encapsulate their best ideas on a topic. As you progress, you will be able to make your own decisions. But in the beginning, it is a good idea to do exactly what your mentors tell you to do. Do as they do. Follow their steps. Act like their shadow. Shadowing your mentor is a great way to acquire and develop your own skills. You can practice shadowing by identifying and replicating the steps that your mentor recorded in a scientific paper. Read their map. What did they notice? What questions did they ask? What is the idea they are testing? What strategies, tools, and rulers did they use? Did they find what they were expecting? Keep in mind that shadowing is not just mindless mimicking. It is an active process of embodying knowledge through imitation. Be aware of every move you make. Be aware of its significance. Think as you do. But be cautious. Before jumping to give your opinion about what could be a better approach, first make sure that you're actually learning something. Be teachable. Now you have what you need to cross the door. You have your mirror to recognize the humanity in yourself and your endeavor. You have your map that will keep you on track and oriented. And you also know that shadowing is a great way to develop your skills. In the next video, we're gonna talk about the obstacles that you will find in your journey and how to address those obstacles. Now go, explore reality. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.